first of all production. Y'all just gonna put Kenya Moore on the show with that nasty booger hanging out her nose. That is disgusting. All right, you guys, it's Aaron. Welcome back to the house. It is Monday, so you already know what the fuck is going on. We are talking all things Real Housewives of Atlanta episode. <sighs> I always do this. Uh, I never look up the episode before I get on here. Season 12, episode 12, A Harry Situation. Y'all, bear with me because I almost cut my finger off, okay, this past weekend. That's why I was, I was stressed, okay? I was stressed out. All right, you guys, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Let's get straight into the video. All right, you guys, so this episode of Housewives, I actually liked, I actually enjoyed it. It was really, really cute. There was no real, like, big drama. It was no big fights. It was nothing crazy happening like it was last episode, because y'all know last episode, they was in Toronto. They was acting a mother fool in that hotel i was afraid that all them black girls was gonna get kicked out of that hotel but thankfully they didn't this episode was not like that um it was actually the complete opposite very calm but it was still cute okay okay so the first thing i want to talk about is eva changing marley's name okay so the episode opens up with um eva her husband mike talking they have court coming up pretty soon and they want to change marley's name from marley mccall okay which is kevin mccall the rapper okay if you know that song i just want to see you straight right now cause it's a babe the rapper in that song okay that's kevin mccall that's eva's baby daddy apparently eva's baby daddy kevin mccall is not in marley's life hasn't been in marley's life apparently marley doesn't even know who kevin mccall is um which is so terrible um and i have a lot of questions about that but we gonna get to it and um apparently yeah marley doesn't even know who her biological father is she thinks that michael sterling is her father and so she's looking at her brother's name and she's looking at you know her mom's name and her perceived dad's name her stepdad and she's just trying to figure out like why am i the only one who doesn't have the last name sterling like she feels excluded she feels left out and so of course eva being the wonderful mom that she is wants to make her child you know feel included i feel a two ways okay at one hand i commend eva for trying to include her daughter um into the family you know what i'm saying if marley wants to be included as far as last names is concerned then i feel like that's great that eva is taking that step to go ahead and change her last name from mccall to sterling at the same time and this is a disclaimer i'm not a parent and i'm not judging anybody's parenting it seems as though eva is trying to erase her father from her life that's just what it feels like for me you can change her name now and you can act like that michael sterling is her father all you want to but at the end of the day there is going to come a point in time where you are going to have to explain to her that kevin is her real father that mccall was her last name okay from her biological father and that um if one day if Kevin gets his life together and Marley wants a relationship with him, then you're gonna have to be a mediator between those two. Tanya reveals all the tea, okay? So the ladies go to the spa. I think it's called Jinju or something like that in Duluth, Georgia, okay? Shout out to all the hoes in Duluth. You know, I got a couple of them. And you know, they getting foot massages and they chilling and they relaxing or whatever. It's Marlo, Portia, Candy, and Tanya, okay? So they're sitting there and they're talking about the Toronto trip and how Kenya was alluding to the fact that Tanya's man was cheating with the cookie lady. So Kenya, you're just a bitter ass bitch, okay? You are worried about everybody's relationship. You are too busy worried about Nini and what she got going on that you are not worried about your own damn marriage that is falling off you're on the brink of divorce bitch and you want to worry about Tanya and the cookie lady like what's really going on sis you really looking bitter you really looking like a hating ass bitch and you really need to sit your ass down girl and Kenya boo let me just get on you right quick why the fuck are you getting on national tv with a damn booger in your nose that shit is disgusting, okay? I am mad at Cynthia and Candy for not telling your ass that you had a whole nasty ass, snotty ass booger in your damn nose. That shit was disgusting. When my, uh, shout out to Kiera, okay? She's the girl in the intro, okay? My BFF. She caught that on tape and I was just like, 
Can your girl, you going out real sad. You and Nene both look crazy as hell this season. But anyways, back to the spot with the ladies. So yeah, they talking about how Kenya was throwing shots and she was throwing shade and she was being messy. Everybody knows that bitch, you was talking about Tanya. You was talking about the cookie lady. In case you haven't watched What Happens Live, Tanya basically shut those rumors down. It was actually the cookie lady that was coming on to Paul. The cookie lady was trying to get Paul's number. The cookie lady was trying to slide in Paul's DMs and Paul was like, uh-uh. And Paul told Tanya everything that was going on with cookie lady. So the cookie lady, you raggedy ass, lion ass scallywag, okay? That is what we call a lion scallywag. Shout out to B. Scott. Don't be no lion ass scallywag. <laughs> Don't be no scallywag. But anyways, Tanya is coming with the shits, okay? So while Tanya was still in Toronto, Kenya hit her up and she was like, girl, I left a package and I'm gonna need you to get that package, cross the border and return it to me back in Atlanta. So Tanya was like, okay, girl. So Tanya's husband was like, bitch, you bet to look inside that package because it could be anything, okay? We crossing this border and we don't need no problems with customs. So Tanya opens up the package and turns to find out it's a phone charger and Kenya's wig. So y'all know that Kenya always touts and brags that she has long, thick, natural hair, okay? She doesn't wear wigs. She doesn't wear weaves. She doesn't do that. She doesn't do that. But yet you was wearing a wig in Toronto, okay? Bitch, you got caught, okay? And a lot of people are saying, Tanya, that ain't no real tea. You don't need to be coming for Kenya because this is a fight that you gonna lose, this, that, and the third. I don't know why y'all are underestimating the power of Miss Tanya time. I don't know why y'all are underestimating Miss Tanya Sam. I really feel like... Like, okay, Tanya is like me, okay? She reminds me a lot of me. Bubbly, nice, happy-go-lucky, energetic, always want to do some shit, always down for the shits. But at the same time, if I have to, bitch, I will get you all the way to get there. And I think Portia, too, has that in common. Portia, she is the fun one of the group. She's always the one that's down to drink and party and just go crazy. But if she has to, just like Yvonne ass, she will get your ass all the way together. Like, bitch, you ain't gonna say nothing. I was glad that she pulled out that wig. Kenya Moore hair care is wearing wigs out here in these streets. At the end of the day, it's really not that deep. All the women wear wigs. Okay, so in the next thing you have Candy, Cynthia, and Kenya. They're out for lunch. I think they're at 10th and Piedmont. Okay, shout out to Midtown. What's good? And um, they're eating or whatever. And Kenya kind of snapped on the waiter talking about some, where are my crab cakes? Because Candy and Kenya both order crab cakes. And the waiter assumed that Candy was ordering hers as an appetizer. Everybody knows that the drinks and the appetizers come before the entree. So he brought out Candy's crab cakes as an appetizer. And Kenya was like, okay, where are my crab cakes? And the waiter was like, well, hers was an appetizer. And she was like, mine's was too. Poor man, the poor gay white man. He was like, okay, I'm sorry. Um, let me go back to the kitchen and get it. Like, Kenya, bitch, you ain't have to do all that, okay? You was doing the most with your damn boogie, you nasty ass. Basically, in this scene, they talk about how Tanya snatched Kenya's wig, honey, and revealed the wig at the spa. Of course, Kenya feels some type of way. And Kenya, girl, I just want to say this, okay? Just for it to be on the record, bitch, you started it, okay? You the one was alluding to the fact that the cookie lady was out here cheating with Tanya, man. Okay, you was out here trying to come for Tanya first. And all she did was get your ass back, okay, with that dirty, nasty ass wig. So it is what it is. All is fair in love and war. Um, but now Kenya, I guess, is the shade assassin and she's gonna come for Tanya and she's gonna do this. Bitch, it's not that serious. You look crazy trying to come for Tanya because Tanya is sweet. Tanya is so lovable. Tanya is everybody's friend and you look crazy trying to come for her. So Kenya, I'm gonna need you to take several seats right now because you just, you don't do it for me anymore. Shout out to Demi Lovato, who is gonna be singing the Star Spangled Banner at this year's Super Bowl. So shout out to her. Moving on to the next scene, to end off the episode, of course you have Dennis and Portia. Dennis wants to sit Portia's family together, Portia's mom and her sister, and also Dennis's mom down all together so that he can apologize and kind of just set the record straight on what they're doing. Um, Portia and Dennis have um, decided that they are going to be re-engaged and work on their relationship, which I think is great. Um, he apologized to them and they had the opportunity to just sit down and talk everything out, which I thought was really big of him to consider the moms and consider Portia's sister because a lot of the dudes out here in these streets, especially in Atlanta, honey, would not have done that, okay? They would have not considered your mama and your daddy and your bald-headed granny. So, shout out to Dennis for that. But 
it's actually looking like Dennis and Portia, it's looking like they're finna break up, to be honest with you. And I'm not talking about on the show, I'm talking about in real time, okay? It is January 20th, 2020. It's looking like they're finna break up because on Watch What Happens Live, when Andy asked about them chicks at the damn Waffle House at 4 a.m., she was like, honey, I'm figuring that out. I don't even know right now. I don't even, it's, it looks like she hasn't even thought of, you know how something bad happens in your life and you push it to the back of your mind so that you don't you don't want to think about it you don't want to deal with it i got a couple of those situations happening right now okay um <laughs> yes yeah, she's just like i don't want to think about that i won't talk about that it is what it is all right so that was pretty much it for this episode of real housewives um i don't think there's an episode next week so we're gonna have to wait two whole weeks for a new episode which is all right with me all right you guys so if you like this video give it a thumbs up y'all see my bandage Ugh, so ugly all right subscribe to the youtube channel if you haven't already and don't forget to create a great day i have to hurry up and film another video and edit oh my god happy monday love you Mwah.